Hey guys, EBV Man here. Now in today's video, we're gonna talk about 3D scanning. Now, how can you take something that looks like this and turn it into something that looks like this? Or something that looks like this? And guess what? Something as big as this. We're talking about the Revo Point Mini. And it's a blue light laser scanner that allows you to scan a variety of objects and recreate them just like we did right here. Let's get right to it. Now the very first thing that we're gonna cover here are the specs for the Revo Point Mini. Uh, it is a blue light laser that has a pretty amazing accuracy when it comes to scanning. 0.02 to 0.05 millimeter scans. It will cover an area, an initial scan area of 64 by 188 millimeters. And that's a single capture range. It also supports texture scan and it's something that's incredibly light at just 160 grams. It's gonna work on Windows, it's gonna work on a Mac, it will work on iOS, and check this out, it works on Android too. You heard iOS and Android, meaning that it's completely portable. You can use it with mobile phones. Pretty cool, right? So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take a look at how the scanning process works, how easy it is, and then I'll share with you the models and at least my observation. Now the scanning experience with the Revo Point is actually very good and very simple. I just want to show you how easy this thing is to scan. So first of all, it does come with this rotary plate that's actually connected to a PC that I have here. Um, here's our scanner and it does come with this little monopod that allows you to put it in an angle, but you can actually operate this handheld. You can also use this on a smartphone with a battery pack powering the camera. So this is going to give you a lot of flexibility, especially, let's say, for example, that there's something in your car that broke or you're looking to you know, just uh, create some type of accessory for your car uh, through 3D printing and you want to scan all the dimensions. This is something that's going to allow you to do it. Here what you notice is that I have this platter rotating and each one of those dots on the platter actually help the scanning tool keep track of the image that it's scanning, or in this case, the model that it's scanning. So this is gonna help it um, keep everything uh, correctly scanned. Now, uh, I have this cable going into the computer, and this is a USB cable, and what we'll do is I'm going to shift from what you see here to the actual PC so you can see what I just did, and we're gonna recreate it. Now on screen, you can see that this is my scan of the model, and we're gonna redo this so that you can see how this works. So here I went ahead and scanned the model, and what I found is typically when you scan models, uh, you do get kind of sometimes, uh, as it's eliminating the, the base that you saw there with the dots, you do get sometimes this little look here, but this is really easy to cut out, and this is minor. But I just wanna show you kind of like what type of detail I was able to get, and this is relatively simple. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this from scratch. We're gonna start from the very beginning, so that you can see how this works. Now this is the Revo Point scanning software. And as I mentioned, there is both a, uh, a mobile phone version as well as one for a desktop. And over here on the left side, you're gonna see some of the controls. We're right now in preview mode so you can see what the camera sees. You then have scan mode. You also have you know, a model list, you have a guide, and then you have a support button. Now on this other side, uh, you'll find that you have kind of a preview window. This preview window is showing you what does the scanner see, and then on here, this is another area that it's also showing you what it can see, and I'm gonna show you why it's important to look at both of these. At the very top here, you have how is the scan quality. Even though this image kinda looks a little weird for you initially, you'll notice that the software is telling me that it's in excellent mode, and this is why using uh, the software and the scanner is so easy, because it actually guides you, it helps you have the best scan because if you were too far away, it would give you a good. If you were too, too far away, it's gonna say that's too far. Um, I'm just right, right? And you saw where the scanner was placed to give me what it considers an excellent scan. Now, on this side, you're gonna see a couple things. I have it basically on auto, or in this case, I'm sorry, it's actually on manual, where this is basically showing me the image of what the actual scanner can see. And you can see how I have it kind of like in the crosshairs and it's giving me all the details that I really want. On the bottom here, you can see um, this is another view, and I can modify this. And one of the things I'll highlight is that this is gonna modify kind of like the brightness of the image. And if I change it to this right here, this doesn't look uh, bad at all. The one thing that you wanna look for is any red spots. If you get red spots, and I'm gonna bring, this is the brightness area, so I'm gonna bring it up here. See those red spots that just popped up? that means that it's getting, uh, it's too hot, it's getting overexposed and you're not gonna get a good quality scan. Now, having the right 
um, I would say brightness in this area is gonna give you detail. You can notice the detail in the hair here, how it's popping out. If it's too dark, you're gonna lose some detail. So for example, if I go all the way down to zero, you know, it's gonna get the detail on the scan kind of comes down, it gets muddled a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring it up a little bit. Just bring it to the next level, to a two. And as long as I don't see any hot spots, I'm good. I can bring it up to a three, notice the hot spots. I'm gonna go back to a two. And then I also have remove the plane. What remove the plane does is it eliminates the base. If I put it back, you can see the dots. I want the plane gone, so that's gonna remove it. Now, all you have to do is go to the menu here, and we're gonna go over here to the side, and I'm gonna hit scan, because I'm in preview mode. You have a couple options that you can choose. Uh, the model name, you can determine if you want to be um, you know, importing an existing model, what have you, a fast scan, high accuracy scans, the scan mode that you're going with, you know, if, if it's really focusing on features, if you have markers, if it's dark, a dark uh, scanner, a scan item that you're uh, scanning, um, color or no color, and then also if there's any accessories, um, like a dual access turntable, and this is a turntable that as it's churning, it's doing one of these things. Uh, we don't have that um, in, in our review, uh, but it gives you kind of like a, a better scan because it's capturing the bottom in all different angles. We're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And now you get your preview again. So you have over here, you have your preview. Over here, you have the second preview, which is showing you how much is being captured. Um, it reset to uh, one. So we're gonna increase this back. Let's go ahead and move this one some more to two, because right, we want it a little bit brighter. And you can see, as long as I have no red hotspots, I'm good. And then on the side over here, I have some controls, right? I have a timer, and then I have the start button. And then we're gonna go through some of these. We don't need all of these, but you'll see the process. So we're gonna go ahead and start. Now, what we'll start to do is we'll start to scan the image. And it's gonna look a little weird. Sometimes it's gonna look like it's um, kind of um, not really overlaying the scans correctly, and you may, it may look like the model is um, kind of shifting. You don't have to worry about that. So right now you can see the green is, is actually what it's capturing. And you can see that the, the bottom of it is being captured really well. You can see all the detail there. You can see as it's rotating on the back, it's doing a real nice job of capturing this. Uh, the dots, again, are there to serve as guides for the actual scanning software. So it keeps track of where the, the uh, item that you're scanning is actually being um, scanned and all the rotations. And we're just gonna let it do a full rotation. Uh, at times I'll have it go through multiple rotations, especially if it's a highly detailed uh, item, especially if I'm looking for it to have, let's say, um, a lot of detail. In this case, and notice how the nose looks like, whoa, wait a minute, what's going on here? You got two noses? Don't worry about that. So far, everything looks good. And what we're gonna do is once this is completed a full rotation, we're gonna stop it and then we're gonna continue the process. So you'll notice over here on the bottom also it's saying how many frames have been uh, scanned. So we've scanned a little bit over 970, 980. We're gonna probably hit a little bit over 1,000 in a couple seconds. Uh, so as soon as I'm comfortable that it's done a full rotation, and I think around here it's gonna have that full rotation, I'm gonna hit stop. Now when you hit stop, you can actually, um, you could actually take the item and lay it on side, especially if you're wanting to get another part of it at the bottom, or if it's something that, let's say for example, it's a car part and has holes in it, you wanna be able to get the scan, the depth. There's all these things that you can do. In this case, I'm just gonna say complete, right? So I'm gonna say complete. And now what the software is gonna do is it's gonna start interpreting what it's scanned and it's going to create a model that I can print. Now keep in mind, I've shown you how I've taken that specific item and I was able to create this print right here. So you can see this, let's make sure we get, you to get this guy right here in focus. So you can see what he looks like right there. All right, so this one came out really, really nice. And then as it's still processing, I'll show you the next one. Um, I was able to make this guy right here, and this guy also turned out really nice. Make sure he's on focus, All right? Same, same, all I did is I just changed the size of it. And then the largest one that I made, and this is the cool thing about it, is this one right here. Now, if you're asking yourself, hey, what did you print these on? So these were all printed on the Ender, the brand new Ender, um, right? This is a 5S1. So this is one of the fastest um, Ender printers uh, currently on the market uh, that prints at 250 uh, millimeters per second, and, and you'll see that um, in the shot. Now, we are already done, so take a look at what we have here. We'll come back to the screen, and you can see what the screen looks like um, and the scan. 
Now, at first, when you look at this, there's probably going to be some defects here. And you're like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. It's not 100% perfect. This is OK, because the software is smart enough to fix a lot of these things. So you'll notice right here that the bottom of the chin, there's a hole. I think that's what they refer to as a hole. And then when you look, you continue to move it around, there's some areas that you know it didn't do a fantastic job. So you can see kind of like some of the holes that are there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to correct that. And if I click this over here, there is a menu that we're going to see. And that menu basically gives me the ability to adjust how the mesh is going to be corrected. And there's an area here that says fill holes, which I'm going to choose because I wanted to fill those holes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the button so that it will start uh, correcting the mesh. Now what's going to happen is it's going to go through, it's going to fix things, and oh my god, look at the difference now. So as I come back, the hole that was on the bottom of the chin, look at that, gone. And now look at the quality. Isn't that superb? This is awesome. So you still have all the hair detail. It kind of took care of all the holes that were there. Now one of the things that you'll notice that it has kind of like this base here. I'm not worried about this because when I put this in my 3D printing software, I can slice this off. Not a concern at all. But look at how nice this, uh, this came across. So this is why I'm saying that this is super duper easy to use. Uh, software tells you what to do. You have all the tools here to correct any kind of errors that you are experiencing. Um, the one thing is if you do use it in handheld mode, you need to make sure that you have patience and you have a steady hand because doing it on the base is probably one of the easiest ways to scan. So guys, that wraps up our review. See you in the next video.